I've done a lot of projects on my truck and one of the things that I did was to upgrade my sound system with the uh, Pioneer TS series speakers and the Pioneer head unit which is a double den touchscreen and obviously that gives me the capability to add a backup camera which is a neat feature to have on an older vehicle right it modernizes it a whole heck of a lot so what I've got here is Pioneer NDBC8 backup camera um, I've had this for a long time. It's been sitting around without being used, so I figured I'd go ahead and pop this guy open to show you guys what it is and more or less how it works. So the first thing we've got here is our actual camera. So this is the camera itself. You see it's got a little swivel base that you adjust. You technically mount it like this, right? It hangs below something. Ideally, I would build something custom and recess this into my tailgate. Unfortunately, my tailgate is currently out of order while I redo it. Um, so that's not an option. So what I've done is I've actually designed and 3D printed this sort of unusual housing such that I can mount my uh, camera here, right? And then this will go on the truck bed and it will protect my camera from impacts as I throw stuff in the bed, right? I, I still do transport things in my truck bed despite not having a tailgate, I just tie them down. So I've designed this piece to allow three bolts to come through and bolt down onto the floor of my truck and then the camera bolts to this. I mean, sticks to that with the double-sided tape either way. It's on there nice and solid, it's not going anywhere and if anything hits it, this will take the blow and not my nice camera. So connecting this camera to the radio is actually pretty simple. You'll notice here the camera's got this uh, three pin clip. Let's see if we can get the camera to focus on that. All right, you see three pin clip. Connects over here on this side on this harness. And this harness is as simple as it gets, right? Red and black for your positive and negative ground. And this is your signal cable into the back of your head unit that will transfer the signal over and your camera will work so that's actually all you need to install this they have provided these very nice like stick on wire clips to help you route stuff and there's this waterproof pad that i'm not 100 percent sure what it's for there's a allen key here to adjust the bolts on the camera and adjust the angle so i'm probably just going to start out by routing this guy right hooking it up um giving it power and whatnot. And then I'll install the camera in its temporary location using the protection block. Um, followed by, you know, in the future, once I do rebuild my tailgate, I'm gonna redesign it so that the area where I shaved the handle is actually gonna have a recession where I will mount this camera and that's gonna look very nice, very trick, very custom. It's also going to give the camera a much better view than it's going to actually have for now. But I wanted to go ahead and wire it up and get it ready. You know, I'll be able to move the camera up into the tailgate thanks to this massive length of wire. I think there's like, I don't know, somewhere I saw it was like 20 feet here and another 10 here. It's, it's plenty of room to move. So I'll route this all the way out to the back of the truck. Um, and just have this tucked up underneath somewhere, held up. And then when I'm ready undo it, route it into the tailgate, and uh, yeah, that'll be the new swap. So I'm gonna head downstairs to the truck. I'm gonna show you guys the tools that you're gonna be needing in order to make this happen, and I'll guide you through the process. All right, so as promised, here's the tool setup that you're gonna need in order to perform the uh, backup camera install. Specifically for a Tacoma, you're gonna need a flathead screwdriver and a Phillips head. Um, that's either gonna be traditional screwdriver obviously or a drill like I've got on the left just because it's more efficient. What you're going to be doing is you're going to remove the AC trim panel using the flathead screwdriver. That'll allow you access to the screws that hold the radio console in. You take that out using the drill or screwdriver, whatever you've got, and then you just pull on the console and it will unclip from the dash and you'll have access to your radio. Once you're in there, you're obviously going to need a wire stripper of some sort. Now. Uh, my father's an electrical contractor. I grew up working in construction sites doing electrical. Um, so I see a lot of people using these really crummy wire strippers that they sell at the car parts. 
Those are terrible. This is a much, much better quality wire stripper than one you see there with the orange grips. You can get that at Lowe's or Home Depot. They're not that expensive and they're far superior to the crummy ones from the car parts. Um, red handles there on the left is actually a crimping tool. I use that in order to crimp the electrical connectors. Um, I got it from this really cool tool briefcase that my father had from the 1980s when he made uh, electronics for Sony and such. Um, you can probably find that online. I've never seen it in a store. If someone has seen it at Lowe's or Home Depot, feel free to mention that in the comments and let me know. Beyond that, you're gonna need a whole bunch of uh, little electrical connectors, crimps and such. You obviously don't need that massive collection that I have. I'll show you the exact ones I end up using so you can just source those if you don't have any. Um, and then of course, you're gonna need some wiring loom just to protect the cables that you're running. Obviously, I'll be heat shrinking the ends of that. I don't have heat shrink right now, but I will show you that process. I'll go out and get it and then I'll show you guys the install for that as well. So that's exactly what you're gonna need and we'll follow that up by showing you how I take apart the radio console. So here's the Tacoma's radio console. Now on some Tacoma's, the later ones, this console continues further down this way toward the bottom and there's a few more, there's like a bolt or a couple screws down there that you gotta take off that I don't have to deal with. Mine is a 96 earlier model Tacoma that did not have the airbag here on the passenger side, only the steering wheel one. You see that I have a very nice Supra style steering wheel. Um, but anywho, for me this is a very simple thing to take apart. All you're going to have to do is straighten out these AC levers. This is old school mechanical AC setup. You take off these little knobs. Then flathead screwdriver kind of just pop it here in the side and do this work it out now that's gone with that out of place you're gonna have a couple of screws that you have to undo um, the first one is here on the right and there's another one tucked up in here at an angle this way you can't see it on camera but take it out you can put your finger here just keep this bolt from falling down inside the console area. Then here, there's a bolt. I can feel it with my finger. I'm trying not to put my head in the way of the camera, but uh, here goes nothing. If you tuck your head down, you can actually see it. Makes it easy. Again, put your finger on the end, pull it back. That way it won't fall in there. With that removed, and this being one of the reasons I love older vehicles, that's all that's holding that in there. There's just a series of clips here that hold it in place beyond that. So with that removed, you simply stick your fingers here and you tug on it. Now, in my case, it is a little harder to take this off and put it back on because the way that this doubled in unit sticks out here, it kind of interferes with the motion of this. So I kind of got to jiggle it loose. Um, there's also an electrical connector here that you've got to remove and that's pretty easy There's just a clip on the back here. You'll stick your hand in here like like so right and then you'll just Squeeze it tug it back like kind of work it a little bit side to side and it should come out. It's not very difficult But before I do that, I just got to work this panel So I kind of got to work this All right, I've got it out and then here Again, stick your fingers in here. The clip is on here in the center. Push it down, work it out, and it's out. All right, entire console here. If you do this right, you'll save a ton of money. Uh, a few years ago, I replaced this piece at Toyota because I'd broken, I think the AC had gotten broken in there, the AC vents. This piece was $300 back then. I don't want to know what they would charge you now. Probably a fortune. So not worth the risk of breaking this. Put it off to the side, keep it intact. So here you've got two options. You'll notice that the radio is held in by these um, bolts right here on either side. They also have a Phillips head. You could just take them out using your drill and you have to be very careful because they're made out of a very soft metal that will strip easily. I much prefer to use a socket on this. They are a size eight millimeter and 
you have much less likelihood of doing damage using a size 8, so that's what I'm going to do. There's one on either end, and that is how the radio is held in the Tacoma. One of the neat things about the Tacoma is that its factory uh, radio brackets will hold aftermarket radios. I didn't have to buy any kind of brackets or anything aftermarket in order to use these. Um, when I had my previous Singledon Pioneer, I simply used these brackets mounted to the single din and then when i got the double din i transferred the brackets to the double din so these are oem brackets from this truck um, that adapt directly to any pioneer head unit or most aftermarket ones that i can think of um, so yeah if your car is like this I recommend you save those brackets so you don't have to invent nonsense this radio is held in like oem exactly like factory radio would be I've misled you guys. Toyota would never do anything as flimsy as just putting a bolt on either side. I forgot that on the bottom there's also a bolt on either side, so there are four bolts in total. It's been a while since I've messed with this. in so tight yeah of course I uh, can't speak for modern Toyotas because I haven't really worked on them much save for the Weiss Corolla but uh, yeah the old school Toyota stuff is really solid good quality stuff I still have the OEM head unit for this truck which is also very nice unit it's just you know no one really listens to cassettes nowadays USB cords and any number of things the main harness oh my god is that the last thing yeah yeah it's quite a Quite a few things on the back of this unit. There's one thing here, a microphone there, so many things. Okay, so these are inputs that I didn't use at the time. The car speed one being for the GPS, and then the gear signal, reverse gear signal input. That one I'm actually going to probably use now because I need that for the camera. Although, might just be able to power the camera directly from the reverse light. I don't know how that's going to work. I might just actually connect this somehow. I'm going to have to do a little bit of research to be certain if I can just direct connect the camera to my tail light or if I need to connect it here somehow. Probably read the instruction manual. So here's the electrical connection for the camera that I'm going to be looming right now. So this is kind of your connections to the radio end. You've got the video signal input to the radio, positive, negative. And then this is the camera clip connection. This is one big sort of hybridized cable harness. It's a bit messy. I'm mainly concerned, obviously, with looming this portion, because this is the portion that's going to mainly run under the car, this part realistically just needs to stay behind the radio. Fortunately, I can't really cut it because of this one. I would love to reduce the length of this somewhat. I'm pretty sure this is enough to just run the length of my truck. Maybe I'll need some of the other cable to run outside, but that's a big maybe. Alright, so I've got my length of moon decided. Go ahead and just clip this here. Or our strippers make short work of this. Then I'm going to go ahead and install this stuff. Alright, now in order to loom this cable, I'm going to be using another electrical contractor's trick. I suppose if you don't have access to this, you could always use a rod of some sort. But uh, what I'm going to actually be doing is, I'm going to be taking this wire fishing snake, fishing it through the loom, taping my wire that I want to pull, to the other end of this and then pulling this through because otherwise this kind of loom is really almost like one of those Chinese finger traps and it's very hard to get stuff through it. So this has this little end right 
that little end it's gonna get hung up in there so wrap some tape around there I've got some gaffers tape here really good stuff gaff USA very expensive tape very high quality stuff use this to route cables for uh, concerts and things like that tapes the cables down to the floor so you don't trip on them. Alright, so doing that should help pass it through here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tape this here with the gaff tape and make this nice and round. Make this end nice and round so that it passes through so without too much drama. I could use electrical tape for this, of course. I just happen to have this on hand, and I like it. I work miracles with this stuff on Sundays. First, reinforce this annoying little juncture where the wire is very kind of like limp. I don't like that they did that. Makes the wire weak there. Very easy to tear this while you're tugging it. So I'm going to use this to add strain relief to the cable and really strengthen it up to the head here. got this all the way out to the end. I've got my connector here. I'm going to of course do some trimming on this. This is pretty ugly. I can catch that. This end was so ugly before I started unfortunately, but this will be trimmed and then taped back. It won't be a major issue. Scissors will probably do a better job here than this wall. So I did a little bit of uh, off-camera work in order to figure out how I'm going to go about routing the wire for my camera and what I've basically come up with is this. I've removed my seat, it's pretty filthy back here so I did give it a light vacuuming. I took off the door sill, right, the little plate that goes over the door sill if you will. Um, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to route the wire coming out in the back of the radio down across my dashboard out through this kick panel which I've also taken out and then across this carpet over into the back of the truck
So I've pulled my cable out into my kick panel area. Now, fortunately, the way this cable is made, the ground cable for this camera ends up being over here while the other end is way up over there behind the radio. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to crimp a circle connector on here. I'm going to take advantage of this existing screw and I'm just going to use that to ground the camera there. Alright, seems like it comes pre-peeled. It does. Perfect. Take out that screw. Now, gotta find a little circular eyelet connector that will fit through it. So, I've got an eyelet connector here. That will allow me to connect my ground cable there. All right, so, let me very quickly perform the crimping of that cable. This is a bit long the way they cut this, but because it's also a fairly thin cable. Go ahead and twist it back on itself. Right, I'm gonna slide it in here. The first thing is these stupid little plastic things. Gotta remove them. I like to, on these, I tend to remove this little goofy plastic thing, slide it back on the cable, then I do the crimping, then I slide that forward back onto the crimp. Don't try to crimp through this, it's a nightmare. interesting there's a bolt here so it turns out that was a bit of a bust because what I thought was a plug that led to the bottom of the truck actually turned out to be a plug that blocks access to a bolt uh, I'm not really sure what that bolt is for but uh, yeah it won't give me access to the outside like I need it turns out the plug I had seen when I crawled around on the bottom of the truck is actually somewhere in this area underneath the seat so I'm gonna have to go over there, route the wire across that way, and the rubber plug is under here somewhere. As a result of finding out that the plug was not where I thought it was, um, I obviously changed strategy. What I ended up doing was I took a screwdriver from the bottom of the truck and I poked it through the port. Then I tied my cable to my wire snake there, or fishing line, whatever you call it, and I poked it through the hole in the grommet. So now it's sticking out of the bottom. So all I got to do is go underneath the truck and pull it through. I'll undo the snake so I can pull that back out.
this camera will probably be really hard to just uh, film for you guys but basically I'm just gonna crawl along the bottom of the truck I've got the back of the truck up on ramps so that I have plenty of space to work I've bunched it up here and I've zip tied it to the bed. Now all I've got to do is drill a hole so I can uh, connect this to the camera on the other side and of course drill the holes to mount my sort of uh, camera protector tent. Then the camera mounting will be complete and I've just got to do the wiring at the radio in order to get the signal to work when I put the truck in reverse and also uh, just in general so the camera can have power.